Hello everyone and welcome to my colonization 2.5x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this series we are going to attempt to colonize the Kerbal system and that means establishing bases and stations and doing resource utilization throughout the planets and moons of the system. And there are many things to talk about uh, about this setup but the first thing I want to set out right up front is that this is not career mode this is a uh, completely unlocked science mode. So the entire tech tree is unlocked. There is no funds and we can do science, but we don't need to because we've got all the technology. So this is meant to be more of a simplified sort of straightforward kind of thing compared to my previous colonization series. And I want it to be fun. Uh, I, I felt bogged down by things in the other series. And I wanted to make sure that this uh, had a sort of momentum to it and I didn't get stuck on things and that it, it, it just flowed a little bit better. So uh, to that extent, I'm going to, uh, I'll discuss all the changes that I've done. But first of all, let us do this launch. Uh, we'll get this underway. I'm using KOS so I can talk about the series while it is launching. I'll use KOS uh, to uh, help me keep things moving like that in the future as well. So I'm just going to click run. Now, this is colonization 2.5x because I have scaled up Kerbin by a factor of 2.5 times. So it is a larger planet and that gives us a nicer horizon I feel. And so it takes more delta V to get to orbit and that will be reflected by this Ariane 5. This is the Ariane 5 from Lonesome Robots and I'll be using a number of Lonesome Robots rockets in the series. We have the Ariane 5 and we also have an Ares-like system. I'm also going to be using the CX Aerospace Shuttle parts, and so you'll see that in a bit. We are currently launching the Gagarin module of our Kerbin Orbit Space Station, and that is what we're going to begin with. We'll begin with building that space station, and we'll proceed to build stations and bases around uh, the Moon and Minmus. I've set up some cameras. That one is not particularly good right now. That's the payload camera. And we've got some wiggling on the boosters right now, which is interesting. Let's see if we can catch those flying off here. To a large extent, I want to try and get cinematic moments like this in this series as well. I'm not using USI life support. I'm using TAC life support because I'm more comfortable with that. And I just had trouble... Um, trying to adapt to USI life support and I also want to learn how to use the USI colonization parts with TAC life support because that's important for other series like the like the Realism Overhaul series where I am going to be using USI colonization parts in it but I also use TAC life support. I am going to be making changes to parts so if you are following along you might need to be aware that because we are 2.5x we need to have certain changes. I'm going to straight up uh, make sure that all the engines are consistent and they are going to be consistently assuming that liquid fuel is methane and uh, oxidizer is liquid oxygen and they'll have ISPs that match that assumption. And so even though uh, technically the upper stage of the Ariane 5 rocket burns hydrogen and oxygen and should have a very high ISP, I've uh, reduced the ISP to make the assumption that it's actually running on methane and oxygen. And that's just so that I don't have OP engines that I'm constantly using. All the engines are going to be relatively in the same range. And so that will ensure that, you know, I'm not overusing an engine and that I'm using the engine more for making sure that the craft looks proper rather than, you know, because it has some particular benefit. And uh, mod propellant is going to be assumed to be hydrazine, so anything that uses mod propellant should not have an ISP of over 280. And I'm just going to edit any engine that seems to have, uh, seems to violate that. Actually, the boosters on the Arian 5 on this uh, mod initially started out with a remarkable ISP of 400 seconds in vacuum. I reduced that to proper SRB ISPs. So I've been doing that sort of thing and it, of course that makes it a little bit harder for you guys to maybe follow along 
but uh, in general you can assume that my engines when it's liquid fuel and oxidizer they're going to have a vacuum ISP of about 330 to 380 and uh, so this one is uh, closer to 380 because it's a vacuum engine so it's 370 the sea level engine had more like 340 and then the hydrazine thrusters are going to be limited to 280 and the same about the same for the SRBs which means that it's a you know net upgrade compared to the stock engines for both the SRBs and sea level engines and that makes sense because we're around a bigger planet it takes about 5,000 meters per second to get into orbit around 2.5x Kerbin. It depends on your launch profile and thrust weight ratio, of course. And this is the first module of our space station. It looks like the first module of the ISS for a reason. And yeah, we are, we're basically building a, an ISS in here first. And that's how we're going to start out. Instead of using the Proton, obviously, I used the Ariane 5 and that's to simplify things because I don't want too many launchers. I will develop new launchers that aren't like real launchers but for now I want to use uh, relatively few launchers to get things moving along. So I'm focusing on developing the payloads right now. I think I might have said uh, CX Aerospace Space Shuttle. I meant Cormorant Aeronology Space Shuttle is the space shuttle parts that I'm using. CX Aerospace we have the, the sta space station parts from we also are using many aircraft mods and that's because my vision for this is that we establish all the bases around the Kerbal system and then we sort of play a Kerbal visiting these places and so we want you know nifty little uh, space planes that our Kerbals will use to visit location to location and I sort of have that that image that sort of sci-fi image of how space ought to be in my mind when I think about what my goal is. Obviously we have hull camera VDS for the cameras and if we turn to this camera we see this is the payload camera right now and the moon in front there interestingly enough. I've already planned out the station and I've planned out the station for the moon and Minmus. I did these during live streams and if you want to pop into live streams uh, sometimes I will be planning out this series to uh, you know build the craft and all that stuff and I'll do that during live streams so you can see that I'm not going to go through the build process during the videos so you can catch that on Twitch I will have the mod list in the video description but all the usual stuff uh, KAS, KIS um, we have nebula decals. Uh, yeah. uh, we've got sort of a floating sort of Roscosmos decal there. And uh, we've got a decal for the European Space Agency there. Uh, I need to work on making sure I tweak them to the body properly, but um, gives everything a little bit more character. We obviously have real plume, planet shine, things that make our, our Kerbin look good. Uh, we've got stock visual enhancements and that's using environmental visual enhancements for the clouds and other effects. I've used texture replacer and uh, Teflon Mike's skybox. Smoke screen is in here for real plumes of course and we will be using tweak scale as well. And it looks like we are uh, we're not quite in orbit right now. Orbit is 91 kilometers. It stopped at 70. I need to maybe fix that, but that's all right. We will relight this in order to... Uh, actually, maybe we should just have this get into orbit on its own, and we'll dispose of this stage. So let's do that. Control from here. I am not using comms, and that's because that's just a hassle. I could easily put communications on things, but that's extra parts and extra lag. And so far, it's as you can see, operating quite smoothly and I'd like to keep it that way. Right now this does not have food, water, and oxygen on it. We will have to send up a supply vessel. Uh, we are using these Hoyo docking ports. These are from Lonesome Ro Robots as well. They do require the orientation to be correct and so for the next module I'm certainly hoping 
that we have the docking port turned properly because otherwise it's not going to dock right. Now for the modifications that I make to the engines and such in this series, I'll post a config for in the video description so that you can have those. I, I can do that. So yes, any change that I make to anything in this, I'll just add to a single configuration file that you can drop into the game data folder. Since the scaled up Kerbin, we do not have uh, any inclination to speak of, really. So that makes things a little bit easier than trying to build the International Space Station in Realism Overhaul. I think we'll park it there. Okay, so that is our first module up. Its solar panels are out. Let's uh, launch the shuttle with uh, the next module. All right, so what we have here is the shuttle Audacity. I have named it Audacity. You can see right there. And it is carrying the Glenn module for the space station. We're going to be using a tug to place the module on the space station, so that there's a tug in there as well. And uh, let's get to it. So run shuttle. Eventually, I hope that uh, our launches will be entirely cinematic. And so, instead of having all of the UI up, we would instead uh, have that off. And I could just do the PAO sort of role. And we could use various cameras, for instance. Shadow Nose looking interesting right there. This is actually a camera on the booster right now. That'll probably be more relevant once we get uh, a little bit further along. More or less, this is running on the same launch script that I use for the space shuttle in in uh, Realism Overhaul, except the altitudes have changed. Ah, there's a bit of a worrying situation with my camera, I think. I might need to add more heat shielding to that camera. I think the camera on the external tank should be fine though. I think it's only because this camera is facing the wrong way. Oh, maybe it'll be fine, let's see. Uh, that didn't sound very good, did it? Um, oh. Well, as far as parts to lose are concerned, I guess that's the bottom of the tank is not the worst part, part to lose. We've got our wing pieces. We clearly need to work on that. Yes, uh, so we need to work on separation of the boosters. And maybe camera placement. So currently these engines are the ones from Cormorant Aeronology, not the vector engines. So they only have 700 kilonewtons, uh, specific impulse 360, in line with uh, what I was configuring them to be. The shuttle is flattening out and we're looking at that periapsis. And the apoapsis. Of course we do want the external tank to deorbit. So we are anticipating that. We want a fairly low periapsis and then the shuttle will complete orbit on its own. Apoapsis is in space now. And the apoapsis is a bit high. But periapsis is good for disposing of the external tank. Ooh, but I haven't taught it how to maneuver away from the external tank. And I can't do that myself right now. I think I need to put some separatrons in the external tank like I do with the CSS shuttle so it doesn't bump in. That'll be easier. Okay, interesting. It uh, doesn't understand the circularization burn. I'll have to fix that. I guess I'll have to do it manually. Again, there are things to fix here. Not everything's going to be perfect. So as that so happens, we are going to be going into a higher orbit and we will allow, allow the station to catch up. The Gagarin module to catch up. And inside the cargo bay you can... Oh, jeez. That decal is a little bit big. You know what? Uh, I don't know, Bill, can you EVA and get rid of the decal? Because that's, that's not the decal we were looking for. 
I don't know if he can without a drill. Does he have a drill? Did I manage to figure that out? Nope, I didn't equip a drill. Oversized decal. That was due to a uh, configuration change that I had done. Uh, disassemble part, yeah. Uh, it is the decal. Alright, off it goes. And we got some material kits for it too. Okay, decal crisis averted. We might have to have somebody place a new decal on there. That's how I got the little markings for the space shuttle. Again, same as with the Ariane 5. Nebula decals. Ah, and we also have USI fuel cells back here. These derp mop propellant fuel cells. Uh, since we only have mop propellant on the shuttle. Well, we do have a little bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer. That in the... I don't know why we actually have that in the tug, but we have that in the tug, so... Interesting. Okay, so the station is four kilometers away. We are currently matching velocities with it, and then we will approach. Of course, we are not going to dock because there is no docking point. Well, actually, I think we could actually dock with it, but our main goal is to have this module attached to the station. Oh, I hope we're not using the tug's fuel. Ah, we have been. We've been using the tug's fuel. Well, I guess that's all right. It didn't really need all that fuel to do this particular job. Though we'll probably leave it with the station so that it can handle future stuff and we don't have to bring it up again. No point bringing it back down. It is an independent spacecraft. Should be going in the opposite direction. And now, let's see if I did this right. Um... Decouple node, switch, K, RCS on, uh oh, okay, no, ah, uh, okay, okay, it is free. Probably want SAS on. Okay, extend boom. Okay, I think everything is all right. So now we want to control from this point, and let's see if we can dock it to the Gagarin module. This is the Glenn module. Um, somebody during the live streams, I think it was probably Mikko, uh, suggested using astronauts and cosmonauts as the names for the modules, and I went with that. Hmm, these say enabled if I don't see thrust coming out of them I hope they're working if we take a close look it looks like the gap is on top on that one and we do have one of the prongs on the top there so I think they're all lined up the nice thing about this install right now is frame rates and I hope to keep it that way I hope that I can maintain frame rates. Okay, we have bounciness. Let's see, port active. Okay. I think maybe we're just rotationally a little bit off. Okay. Now we have a persistent rotation to one side. That's not great and all, but... Maybe I have to tell the other side... Well, I definitely want to set as target. I mean, come on. Uh, we've got sort of a Gemini Agena thing going here. Let me turn that off. This... Oh, wait. Uh... I don't know, port passive. No. Maybe I need to go out and. Uh, there's uh, increasing problems here. Uh, hold on. Oh, time warp trick does not help things. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, 
Uh, we definitely are not aimed right. Oh. Okay. There's magnetism. There's magnetism. It's just an additional complication to the whole thing. Uh, so I look close to you. No, that's definitely not yanking it in properly. Oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> they want to get together. They definitely want to get together. That seems right. Oh, there we go. Holy mackerel. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this module is not tilted properly with respect to that module. Hmm. I'm going to... Can we rotate it? I'm gonna undock it again. Really want it to be like this. Oh shoot. But it doesn't seem to want to be like this. Even if the prongs align. Okay, there it likes to be, but that's not quite right. But it definitely likes to be this way. Well, who am I to argue? Let's just... that's just how it's gonna be. It's supposed to be that this PMA, it's what it is, tilts downward, not sideward. But we're off to the side on this one. Well, sure enough, the first plan that I made has already gone awry. So this is off to an interesting start, but we'll leave it be. <laughs> I, uh, I'll get your opinion on these docking ports, maybe. Yeah. Possibly more complicated than they're worth at this point. Okay, this part of the mission is done. Let's bring back the shuttle. So let's close back the cargo bay. And we don't have to wait until we're in the right alignment with the KSC. We can just continue on right now. Let's get some distance from the station. We'll be in a different orbit now. I'm going to try my KOS script for returning things. Well, whether this re-entry works is still a work in progress. We'll try and make sure our Kerbals stay safe. We've got all four of the orange suits in here right now. Well, this is quite a spectacular view as the shuttle is preparing to do its retro burn. All under the control of KOS. Hopefully the numbers in KOS are right at this point. We haven't mixed up the numbers for Earth and Kerbin. So we definitely need to put more cameras, lights, and also food, water, and oxygen in the shuttle. That is high on the to-do list. I should mention that I used a, a visual pack that I didn't mention before. It is uh, KSPRC, Prout's uh, Renaissance Pack, just for the textures of the planets. So the planets may look a bit different from stock, and that's a good thing. You can see the nice mountain range here, so it just improves things a little bit. Uh, stock visual enhancements I don't think changes the landscape very much. So I wanted some better looking landscape textures. Okay, the retro burn is complete and we are heading into the atmosphere now. Currently with an apoapsis of 127 kilometers, periapsis of 15 kilometers, and we're gonna see whether this is a good setup. Let's take a look at what coordinates we are at when we hit the atmosphere. Again, the atmosphere starts at 91 kilometers with carbon scaled up like this. Of course, I should mention 
everything is scaled up by the same uh, amount, so it's all uh, 2.5x. So all the transfers are going to cost more and everything else. I believe this rudder is from CX Aerospace, not CX Aerospace, sorry, Cormorant Aeronology. So it does have the split rudder and we'll see how that works. Uh, that's interesting. It just it's letting me do non-physical time warp right now. That is highly irregular. Oh, it says the I, I was mistaken. The atmosphere height it says eighty four thousand seven hundred meters now. That's not what I thought it was. We may have to review that. Yeah, we might have to review that. I thought it was ninety one. I'm using sigma dimensions to scale things up. So that's the mod that you're looking for if you want to do a rescaled Kerbin. Okay, we are uh, feet dry, we're over dry land now, and we are still going very fast. Okay, we have some flame effects now. Yeah, we're going to be way far off from the looks of things. It's calculating the distance to the KSC and that's dropping 140 and then 130. There it is. There's the KSC area. I don't suppose there's an island runway somewhere. Should be. I guess it might be over there. I don't know, I don't see a runway on that island. Okay, I'm gonna try and... this is gonna be tough. I'm gonna try and take control. This may be inadvisable, but... I don't know, maybe I can make it to that island, but I didn't see a runway there. It is... more brick-like than the actual shuttle is right now. Well, I'm going to reactivate the OMS engines to dump the Monpathon. And to give us a little bit more of a boost on the off chance we can reach that island. They're not really super powerful though, only 32 kilonewtons and dropping and the ISP is horrible. Why does it look like the island is underwater? So to see the water line up there. That's weird. Scatterer effect of some sort. No, I, I don't feel like we're going to make it here. We will just have to aim for a splashdown. It really slows down. It's, uh, it's not got much glidability. Getting ready for brakes. Huh. The split rudders didn't really deploy with the brake command. But otherwise, the shuttle is intact. Very nice. Uh, well, not exactly the landing I was looking for, but at least we can get the Kerbals back. So let's recover. And on their return, our Kerbals got quite a lot of ribbons. There's Final Frontier here. And yes, highly decorated. Uh, Bill, I believe, got two more because of the EVA he did. But yeah, otherwise, um, Research 1, Splashdown, First Landing on Kerbin, Mach 1, uh, First Kerbin Orbit Ribbon, First Kerbal in Space Ribbon, they all tied for that, I suppose. Um, collision Ribbon, awarded for any collision while in a vessel. Suppose that was with the surface of the water. Heavy Vehicle Launch Ribbon, surely. And 10% solid fuel booster ribbon. Alright, let's go rename our station. And I'm going to rename from this controller. Ooh, wait, whoa, 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 don't be wiggling like that. That, that does not bode well for the future of the station if it's gonna wiggle like that. I'm worried. Uh, maybe I should have just used the stock docking ports or like uh, the USI constructor ports. Yeah, I'm I'm deeply regretting using these docking ports right now, especially since they didn't allow me to align the module up quite right. 
But anyway, interesting, interesting hitch there, but let's rename the vessel and we're just gonna call it the Inter Kerbal Space Station. I'll come up with better names for the other one. I already have come up with better names thanks to uh, assistance from viewers on Twitch. I have come up with uh, better names for the other stations, but here we go. And of course, again, if you want to be in on the planning sessions, I don't know which day of the week we'll be doing colonization planning. I've already planned a lot of stuff out, so probably it won't be for a while before I need another colonization planning session. Uh, though maybe I should do some space shuttle testing uh, on stream. That might be helpful. But in any case, uh, here we have the beginnings of our station plus the tug, and we'll continue to. We'll, we won't just focus on this. Next time, uh, we'll we'll launch some module to the moon or Minmus as well. Instead of just having the uh, construction of the Earth orbit station, we'll branch out a little bit more so that we have some variety in the mix. But all right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of this series, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.